Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's session looking at the NetX Fairs profile for BODS. Um, I'm Tim Rivet. I'm the uh, uh, organiser of this on behalf of PTIC and the Department of Transport. Um, we are recording this and will circulate the recordings and slides uh, at some point in the next couple of days um, for you to review and share with people that couldn't be here live. Um, so most of the content today is coming from uh, Stephen Penn from uh, KPMG. So I will hand over to him at this point. OK, so um, <clears throat> I guess the preface to this, I should probably say that anybody who's been on the previous calls will Yes, be familiar with most of the things I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to talk about um, the profile itself, um, what we're expecting in terms of net structure and comment content, and then um, also talk about, I guess, how this impacts boards, the timeline for implementation, uh, and the expectation that everybody, um, you know, all the data sort of conforms with the profile. Um, so for those who I guess have been um, living under a rock. Um, as we know, operators are, are required to publish fares and ticketing as open data. Um, one of the um, regulations uh, coming from the Bus Services Act. Um, NetEx is quite a, a new standard uh, in the UK public transport industry and is highly flexible. Um, and what we've seen so far in terms of all the fares data that's been published um, using the UK profile that was drafted by Nick Knowles, what we've seen is quite a lot of different structures, um, variations in the content of the data that's being published. You know, for example, um, um, scenarios where different parts of a fair product and the prices and the network it relates to are all sat in different XML files, making it very difficult to interpret. Uh, and then, you know, very simple things like um, what kind of product it is or what kind of passenger type it's aimed at being completely missing. Um, because the um, the basic ethics profile doesn't require any of those to actually be part of a file. Um, so to sort of uh, standardise that, um, both the file structures themselves, um, the level of data content that we're getting, the consistency of that data content, um, and then um, you know how how the fair products and the prices, and then the access rights across the network that it gives. You know how we express those are being standardised and referencing other data sets that we all know, um, such as NAPTAN and then Trans Exchange. So really, it's about to tie all that up and uh, make sure that everybody's um, publishing their fares data in a standardised fashion. Um, and then, obviously, to sort of um, extend what we're doing to cover the concept of complex fares, which generally covers um, discounted products, um, products that qualify for a cap, these kind of things. Uh, so yeah, that's the that's the justification of the, the, the motivation for for this profile. Um, you know, what we try to do is keep it as similar to the trans exchange profile as possible and use the same concepts. Um, so the documentation, um, version 1.1, um, it's the finalised document that's already been made available by the PTIC website. Um, there will be supporting documentation and example NetX file made available by the PTIC website also, and we'd like to get a kind of a beginner's guide type document um, to sort of help understanding the NetX profile because it's quite a complex profile um, and obviously bus operators probably you know would like to understand a bit more about what NetX is um, without having to delve too, too deeply into the sort of arcane nature of XML and these kind of things um, and then we'll also supply um, a bunch of example files uh, for real world products um, so people can see what I guess what bots would expect to see a single you know point to point single represented as or a period pass and then obviously any kind of product that qualifies for a cap how you'd express a cap these kind of things there are there are example files on the uh, NetX website at the minute but those are not necessarily profile compliant because they were just um, drafted in line with the the sort of wider UK NetX profile rather than the bots profile um, so, yeah, between February and March, we've, um, we've done quite a big consultation process. We received quite a lot of um, feedback during the consultation. 
um, sort of topics that that there were um, that were raised. Um, I think probably the most contentious of the issues is uh, fare zones and the requirements that are being made for fare zones, um, because the profile requires that each fare zone in an ethics file contains at least one scheduled stop point. Um, I think many operators have raised the fact that their fair triangles that go into their ticket machines, um, obviously meant to be bi-directional and are sometimes empty in one direction for a reason. Um, but I think you know there are ways that, that can be solved in the way that the ticket machine supplier is writing the Nectex rather than the operator changing the way that they're um, you know using a fair triangle per se. Um, user profiles. I think this is um, something that's been raised that the the enumerations, the user type enums, are just not always appropriate for the passenger types. Um, so what I've done is sort of added a bit of extra wording around guidance around, um, you know, for scenarios where the enums are not appropriate, um, say, you know, for a young person or something like that, that you can um, just use um, the user profile name to add a bit of extra context where the, where the enumeration or what sort of enumeration you should use in each scenario because um, of course um, I think it's not immediately uh, it's not immediately apparent that you can use the same enumeration for multiple user profiles within the same file so it sort of states that explicitly. Um, we had quite a lot of questions around travel conditions particularly from the ticket machine suppliers, a bit of uncertainty about frequency of use, minimal maximal frequencies I don't think the document that recently went out for consultation made it clear that some of these elements are actually only to be used for um, in, in specific contexts, such as um, a period pass um, and things like that. So minimal maximum frequencies are actually um, rarely used. Um, Organisation is another one. Obviously, we have lots of large operators in the country with multiple operating divisions, multiple national operator codes, products cover, um, you know, more than one operator, you know, so Stagecoach might have a, a product that covers, um, you know, Stagecoach Yorkshire, or Stagecoach Midland or something like that. So additional content has been added there to talk about how you can group operators um, and make sure that the access rights cover both. Uh, multimodal fares, this was one was raised a couple of times, you know, that um, obviously in a lot of city regions, um, there are a lot of fare products that are available, pass type products generally. Um, that give access to both bus, bus network and tram metro networks. Um, so the guidance does, the, the profile does cover that um, to an extent, um, but as much as it possibly can, given that um, tram and metro networks don't fall under the Bus Services Act, there isn't necessarily the data uh, published on BODs in there that's, that's coherent, you know, it's, it's sort of a, a deus to the the PTI profile for transit exchange. I mean, I think we all know that there are other sources for this data, such as TNDS. Um, so the NetEx profile for BODs is quite light touch in that respect. I mean, really, it just says that, you know, you declare a, a, a line for a non um, bus mode um, using the same. The same ID structures and uh, other structures that are recommended by the PTI profile for transit exchange. Um, and that all NetEx additionally requires on top of that is a transport mode um, element being included just to signify that that is not um, a bus, which will allow validation to sort of skip over that and uh, not penalise it for not, you know, uh, having all the information we'd expect. Um, and then a couple of other things that kept coming up, which, um, you know, can't really be dealt with by validation, but. Um, you know, but I guess data consumers, what the finding is at the minute, shadow fares are often included in NetEx being published to BODs. Um, so um, I have added some points, obviously stating explicitly that shadow fares should never be published to BODs, only uh, fares that um, a passenger can actually uh, pay and is a reflection of what, what's available to the passengers. Um, product names is, is a similar one as well, that what we're seeing is a very, very variable quality of uh, the product names. That are being passed in the files. You know, there are good reasons uh, for why operators are doing this, but, you know, in terms of the quality of the data, um, we need to be getting to a point where the product names can be taken by a down drink consumer and presented to a passenger and make sense um, rather than a series of abbreviations or whatever. Um, so that's something that, you know, I guess further engagement with uh, the technology suppliers will be needed. Um, so in terms of the implementation, 
Um, Q1 2024 was assigned for um, the consultation process we've just been through and the publication of this profile. Q2, um, board's team um, will be reaching out to all the suppliers that can produce NetEx um, and talk to them, I guess, how they're, how they're going to support operators producing the data that meets these requirements. Um, and then Q3, probably Q4 as well, uh, will be rolling out additional code to the production of environment boards, which will add to the existing validation rules. Most of these will be around things like, um, you know, the complex fares, caps, things like that. Um, and then a hard block on non-compliant data will be implemented. I think there's still conversations around when exactly that data is. I think everybody recognises that um, the previously discussed date of Q4 is probably a bit short notice. Um, so I put Q1 as a provisional date. I mean, I think that stretching it too far into 2025, 2025 is probably not going to happen, but I think there will be a few extra months built in before uh, all non-compliant data is blocked. Um, and anything that's on BODS that's non-compliant will be removed um, after a certain time period. So that's the uh, that's the plan for 2024, early 25, in terms of actually um, turning this documentation, this profile into, I guess, a reality, people publishing data. Um, right, so rather than stop for questions, I'm just going to delve straight into the, um, the NetX profile itself. Um, most of these slides will be reasonably familiar. There's not been many major changes um, to the documentation or the rules themselves. Most of the changes are about clarifying things that I guess my wording originally left quite vague. Um, so in terms of files published to BODS, you know, what the profile does still allow you to do is include multiple products in one file, uh, but what it stops you from doing is include is spreading a single product across multiple files. Um, and that's the most important thing. Um, so the validation rules will be applied in such a way that, yeah, it expects to see all of the elements in a single file, but if it sees multiple iterations of elements uh, for different products, that will be fine. Um, you know, I think a one file per product data set is, is the direction we want to go in, but I don't think it's always necessarily um, the most appropriate. Um, so flexibility has been retained um, for operators to sort of do things the way they want to do, while at the same time tightening things up. Um, so anybody consuming the data doesn't have to um, work too hard to actually find all the relevant parts of a product. Um, it's all sat in the same file. Um, like I say, I mean, I put here as, as the slides that, you know, you might have scenarios where you've got a lot of past type products that relate to a single zone or something like that, a single city zone, you can put all of them in the same file uh, and it'll be fine. So the files themselves, um, we are requiring um, specific, num specific number of frames in each file. Um, NetEx itself um, uses something called a version frame. These are essentially just big containers uh, that group sort of various elements and data points um, that sort of similar to each other uh, in the same in the same groups um, for ease of use. Um, the, Net, the UK NetEx profile obviously is designed to actually do basic timetables and things as well, um, but those are sort of ignored in the NetEx um, BODS profile. Um, so really what we're looking for is what we call the resource frame, so that's really just to contain operators um, and you can also include the details for um, ticketing companies, these kind of things, um, any organisation that's that's relevant to your product. Um, we have a service frame, um, so that's basically to contain the public transport network as in routes, and stops. Um, and then we have three fair frames, one which um, is a fair network frame, which is where you'd group together the sort of network elements into entities that you're going to, um, you know, entities that reflect access rights um, for the product. Um, you've got the fair product itself, which is, I guess, you know, the meat, the meat in the sandwich, the specifics of the products, what it's called, you know, what rights it gives you, what limitations it has, etc. And then there's a there's a final fair frame, which is for pricing. So um, in most frames, that'll be quite simple because you're only pricing one product. But I guess, um, you know, in some scenarios, the fair price frame might be quite large and allows it allows multiple different um, product types to be reflected and priced individually. So, you know, if you have um, um, a specific pass um, that has, you know, it has um, 
sub zones and a big zone. You can buy individual zones and you can buy one that does all zones. You can price them all individually uh, in the same frame. So it allows quite a lot of flexibility there. Versioning. Um, Versioning is quite difficult in NetX. Um, it's a lot more difficult than um, timetables because um, obviously uh, tick fares and ticketing is completely unregulated. So we have no sort of external reference point um, to fare products um, like we do with um, timetables, where obviously we have the actual bus registration itself, which is a legal declaration of what an operator is going to do. Um, there's no such equivalent for NetX. So fixing what you're versioning um, from um, frame to file to file. Um, is actually kind of um, difficult. So while we do recommend versioning um, and there is a mechanism for versioning that's in the documentation, it's only recommended, it's not mandatory. Um, we would hope that um, suppliers and operators obviously implement um, that versioning where it's appropriate um, because presumably their product sets are reasonably stable um, and products continue over the years with different prices and access rights. Um, but really what we need operators to do is to make sure that essentially what versioning would do uh, is handled through um, staying on top of active data sets uh, making sure they deactivate old data sets when they publish new ones and um, that will be something that we start to monitor um, later on in the year to make sure they're on top of um, what appears to be you know overlapping fares data sets with different prices um, for the network frame, the service frame that contains the network, um, the profile requires various things, um, particularly mainly in reference to external data sets um, to make sure that the access rights as defined in the product are relatable to all the other open data that's available. Um, so for operators, um, we're expecting that any operator declared has a national operator code and it's the same national operator code um, in the trans exchange files published to BODS. Um, for any lines, you know, service, whatever you want to call them, and um, within a NetX file, um, when you're declaring a line, um, if it's a bus, um, it must reference the line ID, the trans exchange line that's published on BODS using the same structure that's outlined in the PTI profile. Um, as I mentioned earlier, because of multimodal, um, if you declare um, a different mode for the line, that will skip over that that ID um, because obviously we can't we can't expect that to happen for for non bus modes. Um, and then stops scheduled stop points when the NetX file should reference an entry in NAPTAN. or one does not exist, a temporary stop declared um, in the equivalent trans exchange file in the lines. Um, so yeah, I guess what we don't want to see is temporary stops that are in the trans exchange file that exist purely in the NetX. And that's something that we'll do post publishing checks on later on. Uh, and then. Once the network is defined within the fare frame, you know, we expect fare zones um, to uh, group together all the stops that are declared in the network frame and that each fare zone should include at least one scheduled stop point. Um, for the tariff, so there's each file must contain a tariff. Um, this is where certain variables of the fare product structure are expressed. Um, they're pretty flexible. Um, so you can quite, include quite a lot of things and these are covered in the profile, but there are certain uh, mandatory elements that we always expect, such as validity conditions. So that's when that's when the, the, uh, the product and tariff is available from and to. Uh, you don't necessarily have to put a two date because of course, you know, product, you may not know when a product is going to be withdrawn from sale, the price is going to change, um, but there should always be a from date. Um, the nature of the pricing structure, you know, we expect a tariff based week structure to be included so you know tariff basis could be it's flat there's a flat fare it could be zone it could be point to point or zone to zone these kind of things and um, that just helps the consumer understand um, the elements that come after and how to interpret them um, and then in tariff we expect fair structure elements we expect three types um, and then a few others are required under certain conditions um, let's talk about the fair element fair structure elements uh, like i said we expect three of them um, a fair structure element, you know, these are sort of self-contained groups of elements to define specific rules, limitations um, that you want to put on your product or, you know, access rights, things like that. Um, so you can define geography and network, time periods, these kind of things. Um, 
and make them, you know, as limitations or or avail, you know, um, access right parameters, these kind of things. Um, so the three we always expect, we expect one best procurement for access. So this is essentially saying, um, what services um, can I use this product on, um, and what stops um, can I get on and off at? So these are the these are the things that we've already declared uh, in the files in the frames that I've spoken about previously. You know, it could be as a fair zone, or it could be as lines or groups of lines. Um, and that's generally a limitation. So what you're saying is, you know, the access is limited to these, to this combination of stops and services. Um, we have a fair structure element required called eligibility. So this essentially um, is where you define passenger types. Um, and while I guess um, in an abstract sense, you know, perhaps an adult product can theoretically be bought by everyone. Um, even whether there's a cheaper child ticket, you know, we expect that an adult ticket is defined as being eligible for an adult rather than saying it's everyone. So it's explicit um, who, who the, um, the product is aimed at. Um, and there's a third one called travel conditions. So this is this is about limitations um, to the product. You know, is it is it a single trip? Is it a return trip and out and back or is it unlimited uses? Um, and if there is limit, unlimited uses, what time period that limited uses unlimited uses covers? Um, we do expect um, other fair structure elements uh, under certain conditions. So there's one called durations. Um, we expect to see this one um, for any past product um, where unlimited trips um, are permitted across at any set time period. You know, you may have multiple durations. Because of course, as I said previously, you can put multiple products in the same file. So you can have a one day and a seven day version and then a 28 day version of the same product in the same file should you want to. Um, there's a carnet element. So, you know, um, this is a complex fair discounted bundle of products. Um, the carnet factual element is used to define the number of um, products in the bundle and um, other things like, you know, uh, what you know when when must all those products within the bundle be used by after after purchase um and then we have a fair structure element for groups um, which is where passenger types um are grouped together you know where um, a product gives access to more than one person and you can set various rules you know e even if um a group allows a variable number of adults you know maybe two you know one to two adults or one to three children as a family ticket you can define all of those upper and um, lower limits um, in the group for structure element. So um, yeah, those are the three main ones we expect to see um, under certain conditions. So the fair product itself, uh, the, <clears throat> the fair product is essentially where all of the um, all of the elements were previously defined and knitted together um, into a purchasable group that a passenger can actually buy um, and travel with. Um, and this sort of bundles them together as validable elements. So those are things that um, you know an external person, such as a driver or a conductor, whatever, would validate that they have the right to travel. Um, so there's quite a few things we expect to see in them. Uh, a charging moment must always be included. A charging moment is quite important because you know that covers both simple and complex fares. That's you know am I am I de declaring what product I want to buy and paying for it there and then, or am I simply tapping um and um you know in the back office a bank says yes we'll we cover the right of this person to travel through the day um and accrue charges um you know these charging moments express these things and help define a simple from a complex product in some scenarios um so we mandate that the charging moment is always included um the fair products themselves kind of uh, the existing different kind of um element groups. So most traditional products are called a pre-assigned fair product because that is, you know, it's pre-assigned because you know what you're buying before you buy it um, and paying for it in advance. So that covers all singles, passes and things like that that you would buy when you bought the vehicle for the driver or buy at a travel shop or buy an app or something like that. Um, amount of price unit product, um, that's something unique to carnet is essentially bundled products so um carnet has got to be de uh, declared as an amount of price unit product ultimately those elements look the same just those element grouping titles um help uh, delineate what kind of product it is um 
And then also within the fair products, we have something called the cap discount right. Um, so the cap discount right um, is very much um, a complex fair. So this is essentially something that needs to be written into every um, file for a product that qualifies for a cap um, or multiple caps, perhaps. Um, so this will really refer to EMV contactless, you know, bank cards um, or you know, some scenarios. There are smart cards with balances that can get uh, decremented as you travel up to a certain value. Um, so either of those must require a cap discount right. Um, a cap discount right, you know, it's where you um, you define which which fair products qualify um, or what level of consumption um, is is needed um, in a set time period. Um, and each cap discount right can include one or more capping rules. So you know you can essentially you can have a one day cap and a seven day cap uh, and define them separately, but within the same elements and apply them to the same product where you have you know rolling caps. So those elements are quite flexible, um, but they will be made mandatory for complex fares. So this is the kind of things when we were talking earlier on about validation rules being implemented in um, Q3, Q4 this year. These are the kind of things we'll be looking at. Um, and the sales of a package, you know, how the fair product can be bought. So that really just means, you know, payment mechanism. Um, something called a type of travel document, which what media is it available on? I mean, I think these days, <laughs> you know, uh, w when this profile was originally, when Netflix was really created, I think obviously the paper ticket was a little more common and smart cards, obviously a lot of them, there isn't actually a, a type of media anymore because yeah, it sits in the back office, but that, that scenario is covered um, in the profile as well. Um, if not necessarily intuitively, there is elements that can be used such as M tickets and uh, things like that. Um, so yeah, what we're saying is that sales of a package must must describe um, must include a, di a distribution channel, which is you know where can it be bought? Is it on the bus? Is it mobile, etc.? Um, how can it be paid for? Cash card, etc. Um, the type of travel document, um, so paper, smart card, uh, bank card, etc. Back office storage. Um, I mean, I think that this is already being covered in basically every scenario by every system supplier. So this is essentially just rubber stamping what's already going on. Um, and then the, finally, the fair prices. So this is the final frame that was described earlier, the fair price frame. So this is where um, entities that we've described, I mean, usually it's um, a combination of entities um, called a priceable object, uh, have prices attached to them. Um, in the NetEx profile, uh, the, bo the BODS NetEx profile, we are expecting at least a fair product and sales of a package combination to be priced. Um, the reason for that being obviously a fair product can come in different um, sales of packages. You know, it can be um, bought on bus, on a pay pair, and perhaps also bought on an app. Um, and those might have different prices. So we expect to see both of those. Um, except in cases where there's point to point or state to state products where we expect um, distance matrix elements to be priced. Um, and now that we have introduced the cap discount right and capping rules, these also need to be priced um, in the fair product frame. Um, and while the complex fares legislation talks about discounted fares, um, what we expect to see is all prices defined as absolute numbers, pounds and pence, that um, even though NetEx supports percentages, discounts, things like that, um, we um, we don't want to see those because I guess it puts additional burden on anybody trying to interpret the data and obviously opens the door for um, ambiguity, I think, perhaps where there's an odd number that's being separated by 50%. So it just keeps things simple by making sure that all prices are defined as absolute numbers. OK, so that's a whistle stop tour of the, um, the profile. Um, I guess um, I should open the floor to questions now. Um, so I've got one, Stephen. Um, if I'm a data consumer that's wanting to get access to this, um, but don't really understand how to um, interpret it at a programming level and things like that, um, where can I go to get more information about NetEx and, and the, the profile on how to understand the, the data that's in the files? Um, well, at this point, there is a NetEx website. 
um, netx.uk. Um, that website is maintained by Nick Knowles. Um, it does have quite a lot of um, quite a lot of good documentation on it. Um, obviously, like I said before, some of the things that are on there don't necessarily conform to the profile that we've asked for for BODs. Um, I think, Tim, that um, where we are at the moment is we're looking at obviously using PTIC um, as a source of supporting documentation and examples. Um, we'll also be um, looking at put it on the, um, the BODs repo as well, the GitHub for programmers. Um, I think that's something we're exploring for all the data standards um, because there are certain issues um, with GDS and gov.uk websites and publishing large documents on there that sort of preclude us from using that at the minute. Um, so that, that's that's what we're looking to do. Um, use PTIC and use the, the GitHub repository um, for the supporting okay. material. Thank you. I take it. Nobody else has any questions? Um, I had finished earlier because I was expecting more. All right, we've got one from Roger. Yeah. I just the um, just the one. Um, we've got a very um, user friendly tool for creating NetX at the moment. Um, how far are we from having a tool to actually view what we put in the output? The the issue we've got at the moment is we think we put it in correctly, but have we? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Um, as far as I'm aware, there is no active plan in the product roadmap for BODs. I mean, I think where that tool would have to sit is in BODs, because obviously we can't have it in the, the Create Fair service, because that would only be usable by people using the Create Fair service, so it needs to be on BODs. Um, there is a time to, there's a trans exchange visualizer that's um, going to be released very soon. Um, I mean, I think we'll take it on board that a way to visualize NetX data is useful. I mean, I've seen that Passenger have got something similar for their their clients. Um, but yeah, it's not an active um, item on the roadmap um, as we speak. Um, I don't think anyone from DFT is on this call. So, Roger, I think that's something we'll have to take away. Um, like I said, I think there is a recognition that this would help people. Um, and it's all about... Um, prioritizing that um, as an item for development. Um, so yeah, uh, not exactly um, a definitive answer. Um, all I can say is at the moment that there won't be one for the next three or four months um, as things stand. Yeah, it's, a, it's an honest answer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can do. <laughs> um, Anybody else any questions? Um, I mean, I think maybe I'll ask some questions at the audience. Um, I think uh, I can see we have David from Ticketer. Um, I mean, I know that I think this fair zones in stops issue is going to cause you problems or your clients problems. Um, have you given any thought to how this might be resolved in your outputs, your exports for, for your clients? It's it's being looked at, but until we know it's um, the conclusion, we we haven't done a lot of work on it. Yeah, well, I mean, the fact that the profile has been issued now as the final version. I mean, it, it won't necessarily be the final version. Obviously, all profiles iterate, but um, there's no plan to push anything out that would remove that requirement. Um, I think that um, we will be reaching out to Ticketer, I guess, um, late in April, early May time, to start talking about this um, issue. Um, and I guess the yeah. other issues that is raised. We had asked for discussion with some of our operators as well, so that we could get the use cases and everything um, captured early on. Yep. And, and that. So, and we have had some early discussions with KPMG with one operator, but. It hasn't gone any further because we were waiting for the conclusion of this, really. Yeah, um, and in terms of the caps, I mean, do you see any issues around the cap, the cap discount, right, and the capping rules? I mean, I know that um, some of it's implemented by by PSPs, I believe, in the way you're yeah. set up. So that's going to be the problem that that it's going to have to be input twice. At the moment, the operators only put it into the PSP portals. 
uh, and we don't hold it in ticketer so we're going to have to find a way of of getting that back as you like and and replicating it yeah i mean i've tried to keep the, the requirements as light as possible but ultimately the you know pricing levels and uh, capping periods simply have to be in at the file for it to to make any sense um so yeah i mean i guess we'll talk about that and how you're gonna um enable that for the bus operators um early may time i mean uh, do we have any other suppliers on rob rob west i mean you uh, you I, you, yeah, you do point, point to point fares i mean have you found any issues with the um stop points and fare zones question does it cause you any problems and it hasn't yet. Um, I mean, to be honest, we've we've only created relatively quite small amounts of data. Um, we are beginning to um, scale that up a little bit now and look at some, you know, some wider data sets rather than what I would term pilot data sets. Um, but no, we haven't run into any problems with the point to point stuff yet. And have you looked at the um, capped? We haven't. No, no, okay. no, not yet. Um, do we have anyone from VIX on the call? Can we see? I don't think so, do we? Anyone from Passenger? Dan? Yeah, but, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think Passenger produced it, did they? they're more of a consumer. Yeah, we're only mm -hmm. consuming the NSX at the moment. Yeah, I know, but I would love to we would love to hear your views from the consumer point of view. Um, do you have any last um, words of wisdom? Um, I think we welcome the, this profile, like it provides a little clarity. And I think um, from our point of view, we're kind of now waiting for it to kind of be implemented across uh, the data producers. OK, well, um, at this point, I don't have anything else to add um, unless anyone puts a hand up. No, well, there we go. Um, yeah, if anybody does have any questions, um, just email me, stephen.pen at kpmg.uk um, and I'll answer as best I can. Um, the, the worked examples of NetX might take a few more days because I was going to use our Create Fair service to create them, but um, we've not actually pushed out the updates for the caps yet. So um, I'll produce those those examples for caps for you, Tim, so you can host them on the PDIC website as soon as we've pushed that um, update out to production for the Create Fair service. OK, if there's no more, then we'll uh, bring it to a close and uh, have a good rest of the day, everybody. Thank you, Stephen.